Hello, going to be doing a guide on overclocking the GTX 1070. We are going to be using a free pieces of software this time. You want GPU-Z from Tech Power Up's website. I'll put all these in the description. MSI Afterburner, just type in MSI Afterburner or follow the link, go to downloads. This one here. Uh, beta version if you want it, but I'm just using standard, I think. And Unigine Valley. It's free download and it's very helpful because you can just run it like this. Put it windowed mode. You can benchmark it to check stabilities and also get a score. Right, as for GPU Z, you want this down here under the not this graphics card tab, but the sensors tab. This will tell you your perf caprice, which is going to be very helpful later. And it's also good for checking your clock speed. Comparing it from here to Amos Afterburner to make sure they're both reading right. Because the, like, the less software you rely on, then the more points of failure there can be. Right. Now, first things first. This with probably the 1070 and the GTX 1080, you can try straight away to get your clock speed here up to 2.1 gigahertz. So I'm going to put on 200 first, just to bump it up, see where it lands. Okay, so you went up 202. And keep an eye on here. You should run this for a bit longer than I'm running it now, but I know the stability of this card and where it stops. So 2 for 20. And then check here. Oh, see that flicker line? That flicker line there. Basically, you want to increase your graphics card's core clock by 20 megahertz at a time until you see those things. Let's see if they come back. I might be able to just, like, in a sense, tease them out by going a bit higher. Yeah, there you go. See them? See anything like that? It's gonna be subtle sometimes. See anything like that? Which would be worse? Go back 20 megahertz. I'll go back to 200 because I saw them at 220. So for core clock, that should be where I'm stuck. You can see here, it's like power limited, even though my power up here is maxed out. So for me personally, if I wanted to try to go higher than 220, or to either 200 to up to 220, I will probably need to modify my BIOS and my graphics card. Uh, don't ask me how to do it yet. I may do a guide in the up, like, in the future, but at the moment I don't think there's even the tools out to do it. So I'm still waiting on that. My right, next step I can do while this is like going to be my max stable overclock here. Uh, my performance cap reason was not um, VOP. Operated by operating limited by operating voltage, which means it could go higher if it had more voltage. So since it wasn't locked by that, voltage isn't actually going to get me far. I can see here my voltage usage is at 1.05 volts. For sake of it, I'm going to put this up to 100, and my voltage goes from 1.05 up to. So what's this? The scene's not very intensive. That's why it's dropped. Once. We go from 1.05 up to 1.08. So even though I've put up to 100, the voltage has only increased by 13 millivolts. This is to do with limitations on the voltage in the BIOS. So since these uh, manufacturer placed voltage limits are there on the boards to stop you from frying them, if you want to do voltage, now it's up to you, you don't have to, if you want to do voltage, then you can just set this all the way to max and not worry too much about it because it's not even going to increase it as much as it says and your manufacturer has already limited it on the board to be safe for your card. So basically free extra voltage. Now, once we've got our uh, stable here, we seem to be stable out uh, 2075. Um, it will vary, keep this in mind. Um, Pascal seems to jump around a bit. So if you see this number at 2075 and then say like 2.1 gigahertz and it drops down to like 2025 or even maybe just below uh, 2000, 
don't worry about it as long as you're not getting artifacts or anything suspicious on here. It's just a card just moving itself around slightly is what GPU Boost 3.0 does. Now for memory clock, you want to do the same as core clock. Pascal has an easy target of 500. You want to select this and click apply. Now do the same you did with core clock here. If it starts to do something suspicious, like you see artifacts, I'll save for memory clock, dial it back by about 40 each time. Because uh, it doesn't make as much of an impact as core clock. Just dial it back by 40. If you get these artifacts disappear, go OK call it there. If not, go down another 40 and keep going until you find where it's safe. Alternatively, that was seems fine at 500, so I'm going to put it up to 600. Click apply and we'll see what happens. Seems to be fine. Now, I'm going to not do this for the like, sake of the video because I need it to not corrupt or die or anything. But I'm just going to say, for example, oh, it died at 600. I'm going to go back to 500, just to have that margin. For me personally, it's up to you if you want to push it all the way to the limits. Now here, you can see we've pretty much maxed out our sliders. I've maxed out my voltage, my power. If I go any higher my core clock, it starts artifacting, and my memory clock isn't really high in place. The only last thing you could really do uh, is your fan speed. Now this is only important if your perf cap reason down here is uh, temperature. It should say something like uh, the THRM, limited by temperature limit. So what you'd want to do there would be to come into these settings, go to fan on this tab, click enable user defined uh, software, and then you can kind of drag these squares to how you want them. So what I've done is generally where this card operates in games is about 70 to 80. So I've set that up to what was that not effect? See? That's why it's good to always have this running. Um oops. I'm gonna just bump this down to four hundred. And we'll see what happens. See like this is how inconsistent these artifacts can be. Um, so yeah, so come here. I'm on the Founder's Edition card. This is where my fan speed is so aggressive. So I'm trying to keep mine around about 70 or below 75 degrees. So I've gone to where the like, normal operating temperature is on like a AAA title. It's like 70 to 80. And I've set the fan speed to the highest, which personally I can tolerate. Now, this will vary depending on who you are, and for some of you, on a founders, if you're on a founders edition card, you may not actually be able to turn this much. But I have headphones that block out a lot of noise, and my mic generally keeps a lot of background noise off, so my friends or people I'm talking to on uh, Skype or Discord don't really hear fan noise. So I've gone up to an aggressive 80. You can go up to 90 or 100 if you want to. May not be the best recommendation though, running your fan speeds 100% all the time. I'm not sure exactly how much that affects the lifespan, but it will. Um, though they are rated to run for years, so it's your card if you want to try it. So get it to about 80, so there, and then kind of build it down. You can have like maybe this a bit aggressive as well, so if you play some um, games that generally run you about 50 to 60, you want to keep it a little bit cooler, you can like have another flat line here to make sure it stays there. And then have it ramp off when it's, when it's low temps. You could even have it really low, so just a thing where the, far, the, like, the fan only really turns on when it gets to a certain temperature. That's up to you though. Um, for the voltage controls up here, same as um, Maxwell, you need to click unlock voltage control here and unlock voltage monitoring. And for anybody who will inevitably ask me, come to this last tab, user interface. And here you can choose your skin of MSI Afterburner. And I'm using the Cyborg one. It's up to you. You can also change them um, to Sarsius and Faunite if you use Faunite. I don't know if many people talk about the actual operating temperature on these from Faunite, but generally see like Celsius even in the States. 
So there, there you go. If you want um, to keep an eye on things under monitoring here, you can uh, like keep an eye on all different things, from all like your CPU threads and cores to power of the card, clock speed, memory clock, and you can set these into an on-screen display, which is uh, linked to. That was not loaded. It's linked to River Tuner, which is another piece of stuff that comes with this. So what you want to do now? be like okay honky dory I'm not really seeing any more artifacts what do I want to do so you take these settings keep them as they are and then you want to like basically right click here save a profile and take this and go run it in the most demanding games you have now some of you may not have demanding games which could be a slight problem but you want to try generally big triple A's with well optimized engines but demanding engines so Witcher 3 Far Cry 4 actually runs fairly well so you could run that one it's very demanding um, probably maybe Metal Gear Solid 5 any you know engine that's going to really push your graphics card to 100% usage you don't want it like uh, say GTA 5 is a kind of awkward one because Regardless of, um, I've been on two CPUs and both times I've been CPU limited. Even like when I had my uh, i7 3770K at 4.5 GHz or above, it was still CPU limited. So maybe avoid GTA 5 because you're going to hit the CPU bottleneck first. But take it a big AAA and then see what happens because it can behave differently to Valley. You may get stuff like drivers stop responding down here, or you'll see artifacts in the game. Which in that case, just come back out. And then I'd recommend for troubleshooting, disable your memory clock and uh, just run it again, see what happens. If it does it again, then just lower your core clock and just you know, put your memory clock back on. However, if disabling your memory uh, clock speed like stops the artifacting, you can just like lower that because you know that was what was causing it. It might have also been because the fact that you've got both of these up it became power limited too much and your card couldn't handle it. But yeah, I think that's just about everything. Oh, this is um it's not a quick talk about GP Boost 3. You see here there's like stips. That's just um Actually that's from ages ago, that's when we doing it. It's actually been pretty consistent. Um, if you're running it in a game, you won't see this as consistent as it is here. It will usually drop around a lot more. It is perfectly fine, just to say that. Don't worry about it too much. Right, I'm gonna wrap it up here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section. Uh, I may be talking about how to uh, push the BIOS a bit further to maybe get the power limit up to about probably about 125% on this because it's just um, a single 8 pin but you would be able to tweak it further on uh, say if you've got a custom board which is 6 and 8 pin or 8 pin and 8 pin but yeah, got any questions feel free to ask me in the comment section I'm always here to help if you actually got a good result out of this video uh, feel free to like it I would appreciate it very much and also share obviously but either way, thank you very much for watching, and hope to see you soon.